Good, everybody relax. Um, so real, real quick, since a, um, Callahan asked me to talk about some of the applications that we learn in karate, why, why do karate? Uh, most of you haven't been in a life and death street fight, at least in the last month, <laughs> right? So there has to be other value for it. And so I, I have some thoughts about this. I do um, a lot of work with different businesses and corporations and stuff around performance. And so there's some, there's some crossovers. I won't do the whole thing, but I thought what I would do is I'd share three cheats, okay? Three techniques we can use that we see in karate all the time of different ways of performing well in stressful situations or dealing well with challenges. Okay, so just three different ideas. One of them is what I think of as GPS thinking, where there's a GPS in your brain. And they always think that. Does somebody have a phone? Uh, if I can use that one. I just need to hold, I just need a prop. So everybody knows how a GPS works, right? So if uh, we're here in Santa Rosa and I want to go to a San Francisco, we put in GPS, you know, and it does a triangulation thing. There's satellites overhead, which you know where we are all the time, which is kind of creepy, but yeah, we, we get over that, okay? Yeah. So we get that, and then it gives me the directions. So here's the thing, here's the question. Once I do that, what does the GPS tell me? Anybody? Which way to go? Which way to go? Not really. What's the GPS tell me? Where you are. Where, where, you're where we are. No. What does the GPS tell me? Where do you want to go? Where you want to go? No. All the GPS tells you, if you think of it, the little voice that comes out of the GPS, it tells you what to do next. Mm. That's crucial. That's what we know in Karate. Okay, so what it teaches us is it gives us a behavioral target, right? Now, a couple of things I need to know. I need to know where I am. I need to know where I want to go. But frequently, you know, if I'm here and I want to go to San Francisco, right? GPS doesn't go, oh no, it's pretty far. <laughs> if I'm walking out to my car and somebody comes out and asks me for money and starts threatening me, GPS doesn't go, oh no, he's really big. <laughs> GPS tells you what to do next. That is crucial. And that's kind of the essence. And we take this out. I, I developed a big program in New Zealand that's still ongoing. About, it's a behavioral approach to resilience. And everybody uses the term resilience, but resilience is a real thing. So now they're trying to change it. Now they're talking about sturdiness. But actually, resilience is an actual concept. right? How do you bounce back from difficult situations? So it's kind of catchy now because everybody is using it. But that doesn't discount that that's the actual word for it. Okay, but if you use GPS thinking, what most people do when they are resilient, they have a focus about what their target is, where do they want to go, and then they're able to think about what do I do next. That's absolutely crucial. Karate, we do the same thing. I may want to kick his ass. I may want to defend myself. But, bam, what do I do next? So being able to focus on that, what is the first thing I need to do that gets me closer to my target is essential because it helps us calm down and it helps us focus on what we need to do while still keeping in mind the big picture, right? So when I do this organizationally, um, I work with teams, I work with groups, you know, what's a challenge you're facing? So we put teams together, okay? You know, what, what, what's a challenge your organization is facing or individuals, what's a challenge you're facing? Okay, the first thing we need to do if you're successful, what is the outcome going to be? What's your target? Good. Can everybody agree on the target? Good. What's the first thing we need to do? Then do that. Because then you're one step closer to the target. Yeah. Okay? Then after you do that, then do the next thing. Now, everybody does it a little bit differently. Right? I may know I want to go to Santa Barbara. Okay, GPS tells me, you know, go to the corner and turn right. Fine, I get to the corner and turn right, what does it do? Go to the next corner and turn left. Being able to do that, like Kamite, allows us to recognize what I need to do. I need to survive this, what do I need to do first? The other thing I like about GPS thinking is if you think about your GPS, and I used to do this a lot when my kids were little, uh, when we had, you know, we didn't have the phones, but you had it in line. So we go and I, you know, we're out somewhere, we go to karate, we're at the shopping center, we're doing something else, and I would put in home. And they'd, all, they'd both laugh, because you know where we live, I know. But here's what I enjoy. So GPS goes, go to the corner and turn right. And I would turn left. <laughs> what I liked about that, the GPS in your head, 
doesn't go, Ed, you're such a jerk, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> it doesn't care. Uh -huh. It just says, go to the next corner, turn left. If I don't do that, it doesn't care. It continually stays focused on the target, and it continually tells me what I need to do next, even if I make a mistake. I could do that all day. So part of the GPS always has your back. It, it, it evaluates your, your situation without any kind of ego, any kind of arrogance, any kind of inferiority, right? Because the, you know, having an extra, being extra arrogant isn't any less detrimental than being extra hesitant, yeah. right? We talk about humility, there's this great quote, the humility isn't thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. Right, so one of the things we think about in karate, one of the things we help kids do, right? Kids usually come to karate for about two or three reasons. One of the reasons kids come to karate most is they're a little shy, they're a little hesitant, and they don't want to be bullied or picked on or whatever. So we teach them to stand up for themselves. But also kids come to karate because their parents recognize he's a little hyper-aggressive. How do I think less of myself? But both things are equally as negative. If I spend a lot of time going, oh, I'm too shy to talk, what you're basically saying is all I'm thinking about is myself all the time. That's not that much different than thinking you're the best thing in the world. That gets in your way. Okay, so one concept, GPS thing, and you can all play with this. Is there a challenge, forget about karate, but is there a challenge you're dealing with right now? You need to conceptualize, what is my target? If I'm working with a sales group, what is my target? What do we want? Fine. What do you need to do first? Or what do you need to do to get there? And what do I need to do to get there? Now, sometimes you'll find yourself, you say, okay, it sounds good. This is, my, this is my goal, I want to do this. What do I need to do first? And you don't know. If you don't know, then what do you need to do? You need to find out what you need to do first. But that's just as important. Okay, so one idea, GPS thinking, I like that a lot. Second idea, and so what we might think of is that's kind of a cognitive intervention. Okay, it affects, it's how you think, it affects your thinking. Another one you might look at, we do a karate all the time, it might be an emotional intervention. Okay, so for example, if you find yourself in a situation, you might ask yourself, yeah, what kind of person do I need to be in order to deal with this? Oh. Right, maybe I need, I wish I was more confident. You know, maybe I wish I was more patient. Maybe I wish I was nicer. Maybe I wish I was more determined. That's fine. What kind of person do you need to be? Then you say to yourself, if I was that kind of person, what would I do? Uh, and then you do that. We do that karate all the time. You know, karate is nothing but behavioral psychology, right? Behavioral psychology basically says what you do affects how you feel and how you think, right? So we have new kids come to karate, you know, and they're shy and this and that. You know, they want to be brave, they want to be confident. We don't sit there and tell them you're a good person and your parents love you and confidence is in Hell with that. You tell them, stand up, keep your head up, stand forward, look at your opponent. We teach them to act as if they were confident. And eventually they become confident. Yeah. If you look at the military, okay? If you're a recruit, if you join the military, any military, anywhere in the world, okay? The master sergeant doesn't come out well, you're all good people, and we're going to try really hard and look at each other. You have to defend on yourself. No. We put you in the same uniforms, and we run you for 10 weeks until you wish you were dead every single day. But at the end of that, you feel closer to the person next to you. And you've developed confidence behaviorally. When we stand up, okay, bow this way. That doesn't help. If I can stand up this way, get my head up, get my weight. I automatically feel more confident. Right. The thing we did in class, uh-oh, versus come on, is a behavioral intervention. Right? Everybody repeat after me. I love this because it's <laughs> inappropriate. Okay, everybody repeat after me. You gotta repeat. I suck. I, I suck. suck. Again. I suck. I, I suck. suck. I suck. I suck. Okay, wait. Now repeat after me. Yay 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 me. You all feel better after you say yay me than after you say I suck. <laughs> There's no way around it. It's behavioral. Even though you know what's happening. One more time. I suck. I suck. I suck. Yay me. Yay, Yay me. me. You still feel better. Yes. Behavioral intervention. So what kind of person do I wish I was? What kind of person do I need to be? 
Now, often people use that as a way of going, oh, I wish I was more confident, but I'm not. That doesn't help. If I was more confident, what would I do? And then you do that. I, okay. All the stuff I teach, all the stuff I work with, it's really, really very simple. But you know, it's not very easy. I got that. But we can learn to do that. Okay, when we work with kids, let's ignore how you feel. In, in therapy, I'm a therapist, I work with a lot of people. Um, I, and I always maintain the small practice. I'm doing other stuff, but I maintain all practice. But I, I tell people, you know, I don't care how you feel. I care about what you do. Because what you do affects how you feel. Faster than any other way around. You know, when we think about shyness, okay, you don't need to tell your kids you're really fabulous and you're wonderful and you're a good person. You need to tell them, keep your eye up and make sure you smile at somebody. That'll help people like you. Then what happens if you smile at somebody? She smiles back at me. Yeah. Now I feel better about myself. I don't care how I feel. Karate, we don't care how you feel. Nobody asks you, do you feel confident? We just ask you, why? Stand up. Well, damn, suddenly I feel confident. So that's important. Okay. Another way you can look at it, there's a third way, it's kind of you selecting. You know, all of human behavior, which is a grand statement, okay, all of human behavior, everything you do, comes down to basically four aspects. It's our thoughts, what we think, our emotions, what we feel, our behavior is what we do, and our relationships, how we interact with people. Okay, if that makes any sense. And we know that how we think affects how we feel. And we know that how we feel affects what we do. And we know that what we do affects our relationships. And it isn't in one direction, it's all multi. So some of the people I hang out with, you know, if I hang out with people that make me feel bad about myself, get some new friends. Okay? If I act in a certain way that makes people mad at me, change how you act. If I conceptualize what I need to do and it's not working out for me, change that. But we know there's an overlap. So one of the things we do in karate is we look at those four things. Okay? And you get to decide all of those things are equal and integrally related. What we think, what we feel, what we do, our relationships. But for all of us, I think one of them is a more immediate way in to that relationship. So for example, if you guys have a big, let's say you have a big week ahead of you, and you're, you're anxious about stuff, you have a lot of stuff to do. Uh, it's Monday, how many of you have a list of things to do for the week? Cool, okay. How many of you at the beginning of a week, you want to feel better, you, want to, you have some behavior you do, you go for a run, you go to the gym, you do something? Yeah. Some of you, okay? How many of you just try to relax and put yourself in a good mood, maybe listen to some music you like so you control your emotions? Anybody do that? Good, some of you. How many of you before a big week, you have someone you want to talk to or you want your mom to give you a call and tell you I love you or you kiss your wife or hug your husband or do whatever you do? Anybody? Cool. So all of us do it differently. Right, the list is cognitive. My wife needs to do lists. She needs to have a list, but by having a list of what to do, and if you do lists, no, no list of things to do should be longer than five items. If it's longer than five items, you're just, you're just um, wasting time. Okay, but anyway, so a list of things to do, but when she has that list, that makes her more relaxed. And if she feels more relaxed, she's able to do what she needs to do with a lot of anxiety. If she's able to do that, she's able to interact with people a little bit more effectively. Okay, I'm not like that. I don't have lists. What I need to do is I really have a big week ahead of me. If I'm in the car or something, I like to listen to some music that I like that increases my energy level, that sets my emotions the way I want them to be. And then if my emotions are the right way, it's easier for me to address the challenges. Some people don't do that. Some of that, I'm not going to do anything until I walk the dog. Behavioral. Some people, I just need to, I need a hug. Hey, babe, I'm going, I'm going over. It's a big week. Give me a big hug. Okay? And that thing isn't more or less important, but for each of us, it's kind of a door in. Karate, we do the same thing. When I coach, some people, they go out to spar, and they have a strategy of what to do. Okay? Behavioral. Some people, when they go out to spar, they just need to relax themselves. Okay? Emotional. Some people, when they go out to spar, they look at an opening, interpersonal. And all that other stuff comes together. But you might want to think about that, right? What is the thing you need to clarify first for yourself if I ever face a big challenge?
Now, karate helps that we do that automatically. So we go through a lot of ritual, okay? We wear the uniform. Reminds us of what we're here to do. We stand in a certain way. We bow, we prepare ourselves. All of that's behavior because it's told me I need to be in the right mood. Some of you, I know, I can see it in yourselves. When you're sparring, when you're acting, you're thinking about strategies, but some of you aren't. Some of you are just responding. One isn't necessarily better than the other, but if you know what to do, that helps you organize your energy so you aren't overwhelmed with all kinds of anxiety and non-performance. Yeah. Final thing, because it's almost 20 minutes, it's 18 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I found as a speaker, the number one thing to do in speaking is find out how long they want you to speak and do not stay longer than that. <laughs> and no matter how entertaining you think they are. If you're there for 45 minutes, that's all they want. But anyway, okay, another thing, final thing we can think about, right, is our sense of self. When we're doing karate, it gives us an identity how we're supposed to be. That transfers over and carries over. We can do that all. Right? What kind of person do I want to be? If I was that kind of person, what would I do? That gives us some order in that side step. So karate, the way we do it, is you practice a skill enough where it becomes automatic. You know, in theory, okay, or in practice, martial arts, karate, self-defense, military stuff, it's just a form of responding to an emergency. Yeah. Right? An emergency means you're in a situation where you have limited resources and the outcome is important. Both those things have to happen. I mean, you know, it can be really, really urgent and the outcome is important, but I have everything I need. That's not an emergency. That's just an important situation. So what it means is the emergency is outcome is important, I have limited resources. So the higher our skill level, the fewer things appear to be an emergency. If that makes sense. Yes. Right? So that's why we train. We train enough where the stuff happens automatically, automatically, automatically. So in a situation, I know what the response is. I always think of karate training or, or anything else where it's spontaneous. I always think of it in terms, you know, and I, I keep saying this, it's like language. You know, I don't know how many of you are in a situation where you've had to learn a second language or want to learn a second language. Okay, right. which means when it's a second language, you're continually translating back Okay, to your natural language, okay? Once we become fluent, we get to use language automatically. And that's the goal of karate. Karate, basic sparring. It's like little verbal formulas, you know? Hello, where is the taxi? And you say that a hundred times so you can find the taxi. But you practice enough where you start being able to express and think yourself spontaneously. You don't have to look for the word, but you look for the outcome. Karate is the same thing. Any sport is the same thing. Okay? Any technique, any business thing. If you do it enough, you have the skill there where you get to use it when you need it. So that gives you more freedom, more leeway. And less, less, theoretically, theoretically, if you're a green belt and you walk out and somebody mugs you, it's more of an emergency than if you've been training for 20 years and somebody, you know, it still might be critical, but it's not as, not as much because you have a more of a skill set. So that's what I got today. <laughs> <laughs>